Drinking at the bottle, not thinking about tomorrow. Don't worry, that's a motto. So we keep moving along. Ooh, dropping down a cabo in a sunburnt El Dorado. Don't worry, that's a motto. So we keep moving. Hey everyone, Mitchell here from New Dawn Aquaculture. We're a coral farm located in Edmonton that focuses on sustainably and ethically farming corals for the Canadian reef aquarium hobby. In this video, we're gonna talk about what is one of the most controversial yet popular corals in this hobby, the pulsing zinnia. Pulsing zinnia is so popular because it's an easy to keep coral that's great for beginners, while also being one of the only corals in the hobby that will regularly show movement. While it's not the only coral in the hobby capable of having pulsing polyps, it's really the only coral worth being known for it. There are a couple other corals in the hobby, specifically soft corals such as Suspicillaria, which are capable of having pulsing polyps. You'll really only notice it when the flow in the tank is completely off. Pulsing Xenia, at least in our experience, is the only one where we have seen any pulsing action while you have flow on in the tank. All that being said, the flow you give your pulsing zinnia in your aquarium will certainly have an impact on how much it's actually going to pulse for you. In the wild, these corals come from areas which have very little flow, so over time they've evolved this ability to pulse with their polyps, helping to bring new clean water into the colony, keeping it oxygenated and healthy. It's important to understand that when it comes to placing this coral in your aquarium. If you place it in an area where it's getting plenty of good flow, it's not going to feel the need to expend that extra energy to pulse its polyps because it's getting plenty of flow through the colony as is. So you want to find an area in the aquarium where you don't have much natural flow, that way it'll feel the need to actually pulse on its own. What makes the pulsing zinnia such a great first candidate of a coral for a beginner? It has to do with the fact that this coral does extremely well in a high nutrient environment. After a new hobbyist cycles their aquarium, it'll tend to go one of two ways. The first way and the way that used to be way more common was this high nutrient route where they would have high nitrate and phosphate and they would have to battle it through doing frequent water changes for the first couple of months until that tank really stabilizes. The second way this can go, and this is really a newer problem, this typically didn't happen before when people were starting aquariums with live rock, but with all this dry rock and dry sand, a lot of people are having newer aquariums run into low nutrient issues. And you need to combat this by dosing either phosphates and nitrates directly, or feeding the tank heavily to help keep those levels up. If you're one of those people whose aquarium goes the route of high nutrients, a pulsing zinnia will do phenomenal in your aquarium. And it's gonna give you a lot of confidence with keeping corals cause it's going to grow fast. But if you have one of those aquariums that runs into the lower nutrient issues, you'll definitely still be able to keep a pulsing zinnia. It'll pulse for you, it'll grow well, but you're not really gonna see those crazy explosive growth rates that people talk about. Not until you can stabilize your nutrients at a slightly higher level. On top of being very forgiving of both those crazy high and low nutrient environments that new tanks will run into, the other thing that makes this coral easy to keep, and this applies to pretty much all soft corals, is that they don't really rely on your alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and other trace elements to be healthy. While soft corals do technically build a skeleton through their sclerites, which would consume those elements, it's so little that it's basically negligible, and as long as you're doing some type of water change regimen, you don't need to worry about dosing those elements to the aquarium. So unlike all of your LPS and SPS corals, as long as your major and minor trace elements are somewhere within an acceptable range, you really don't need to worry about their stability when it comes to keeping a pulsing zinnia. Let's talk more about the growth rate that I mentioned earlier, because when it comes to pulsing zinnia, the growth rate of this coral is what makes it so controversial. 
The reality of it is, if you take this coral and put a frag of it on your main rock structure in your aquarium, given enough time, this coral will eventually take over that entire rock structure. And I've seen photos online of beautiful large aquariums that are just all pulsing Xenia. There are ways you can deal with this, but it's important to understand that that can happen. Many people will place it on their main rock structure and then try to strategically surround it with corals that'll have a strong sting, like a dipastria. That way, it'll hold it at bay and only let it grow so far. Another strategy used, and the one that I like the most, is to place it on its own rock island by itself, surrounded by sand. While this isn't a perfect strategy, it's the best one that I've come across for containing this coral. You just have to make sure that you have enough of a sand bed around this rock that as the corals grow all the way to the edge of the rock, no part of the coral can touch either your glass or any of your other rock work. If it can touch it, it can easily spread to it. Occasionally, a chunk of the pulsing zinnia on that rock might detach from the rock and float around your tank trying to settle somewhere else. But as long as you catch this fairly quickly and don't let it get a foothold anywhere else in the tank, it'll be fine and you'll be able to contain it to that rock. So when it comes to keeping pulsing Xenia in your aquarium, my recommendation is create a small rock island somewhere in the sand bed that's not going to get too much flow. That way you can keep it isolated and off the rest of your rock structure, while you can also enjoy the pulsing action of the polyps. I hope this has helped you decide whether or not a coral like pulsing Xenia makes sense in your aquarium. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, because we'll be doing more videos on all of the rest of the coral strains that we farm at Nudon Aquaculture. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.